Hello, and welcome to Chat with a Founder 2.0. I'm Joyce Day with Fun Oil Stuff. And in this session, we are talking with doTERRA Founder 2.0, Elise Hanselman. Elise is sharing some of her journey to Founder 2.0, some of her struggles, some of the, uh, you know, what's working for her in her business. She goes through a whole amazing segment on how her team is using spa parties to really grow their community and their teams. And uh, she really shares a lot of amazing details. So we're going to dive right into the chat here. Uh, and if, but just so you know, the links that she references and the Google Drive, you can grab access to those by clicking down into the description. And uh, you can click the link there to get access to the additional bonuses and the references that she made in the video themselves. So enjoy the talk and we'll see you in there. Uh, Elise on today. Elise and I met uh, just past this past April on the on a sourcing trip to the new uh, Birch Distillery in Pennsylvania. <laughs> we had a fun conversation on a bus, and when I decided to do this this summer, I knew she had hit founders, and I was like, I'm going to go message Elise and see if she's open for it because she was. We had a great conversation, and she shared some really cool things with me on the bus. And I figured if she's willing to share stuff with me, she's probably willing to chat with me. And I was right. So <laughs> Elise, thanks so much for joining us today. Thanks, Joyce. I'm so excited. Yeah, it was so that bus ride was so fun. We had such good talks and I just love meeting fellow, you know, doTERRA, awesome people. So it was it was really great. Do you want me to cover um, literally like my doTERRA story or just specifically like the founder's journey? Um, well, I like hearing a little bit about like what, like what your story was right before founders happened. So okay. how long had you been in doTERRA? Where were you at? Okay. And then, uh, what happened that got you going for founders and then what that journey was like? Okay. Awesome. So I started doTERRA. doTERRA's introduced to me. I was living in California at the time and it was 2000. 15. And I didn't do the business immediately. I got pregnant with my first daughter right when doTERRA was introduced to me. Um, and then so about six months after I had my daughter, I was using the oils living on that's when I really I was like dabbling in the business, but I wasn't really like I'm doing this as a business. So about six months after my first daughter was born is when I really decided to treat it like a business. And um, so three years from when it was introduced to me to is when I hit diamond. Yeah. So it took me three years. Um, I had another baby in that process, took off some more, some more time, but my journey to platinum was pretty regular. Like I was just doing classes, doing a leases, like back to basics model. So there was nothing really amazing or special, um, about that part of the journey. And then when they announced founders, so that was what April, when was that? I don't even remember anymore. April of 2019, 2020. Yeah, so, uh, it was before COVID, wasn't it? I don't remember. It was at the lead. It was during leadership of whatever year that that was. Okay. I don't yeah. remember. But anyways, I was a platinum. I had just hit platinum for the first time. Yeah, so it was 2009. I don't remember. Anyways, it's not important. So yeah. I had just hit platinum the month before. That was that huge, crazy BOGO month when they first released the BOGO box and everyone's numbers were crazy because it was covid and we didn't know how crazy COVID was going to be. So everyone was spending money and it was the biggest month still I've ever had in my business. So I hit platinum. The next month they announced founders. And to be transparent, I actually got really sad because I was like, oh my gosh, I just hit platinum. And I don't get any of those points. Like a lot of people were in that same boat because so many people ranked that that month before. So I started off not on like the best foot because I was like, I just, you know, I just had negative thinking going on. So I, but I knew like founders was something that I a hundred percent was going to go for. So fast forward that year I hit platinum and I was going to go for diamond and I had like a four month plan. So my upline is Molly Dayton, the presidential diamond. So I'm one of her qualifiers and I had a four month plan worked out with her. And so this is the year of COVID and I was like, okay, I'm going to go for diamond November of 2020. That's what, you know, when, yeah. So yeah. So that's when funders was announced was in 2020. So I told my team, like, I'm getting them all pumped up. Like, this is my plan. This is what we're going to do. And one by one, every single team member I had quit except for one. I had every share, every leader, everyone quit. And I was like, it was like, cool, we're going for diamond. And then everyone's like, good for you. Bye. And I was like, <laughs> So I went literally 
immediately into a depression. I was like, my plan is done. My business is going to crumble. And I honestly, truly was like crying every day for over a month. And Molly would listen to me and let me just have my pity party. And then finally, if you guys know Molly's personality, she was like, all right, suck it up, buttercup. We're going for it anyways. Like, what are you going to do? Not go for diamond? Like, of course you're still going to go for diamond. I'm like, with who? I have no team anymore. So I decided she picked me up off the floor and I was like, I'm still going to go for it. And I did. And I hit, I still hit diamond and my plan. And it was during the presidential election with Trump, November of 2020. Like it was just, you know, so crazy. So I, I learned a lot of lessons from that. Like, obviously it's part of our journey. I have leaders that have quit now. You're going to hear that part of the story. And this has happened to me twice now where my whole team quit. So, you know, and some came back, like the cool part was that when my team saw me surge forward and realized like, Hey, she's going to hit her goals with or without me. A lot of them were re-inspired because they were like, Oh my gosh, she's doing it. I really can do this. So that was one of the cool things was watching some of my team actually come back and some are still with me and some are not, you know, but it was really, that was one of the nice things to see. So then, you know, I'm still going for founders. And then I had, I'm, I'm not great with dates. So I don't remember when it was, it was before they made all the changes and extra points and all that. It was still regular founders. It was about, you know, two years in and my team quit again. My brother, who my brother and number one rule, right? Don't put family on your front line. Well, all those years ago, I did. My brother's on my front line. He hit gold and then quit the next month. And I was like, I needed you gold two more times for founders. Like I was so selfish. I was like, I need you for founders. And it was my brother. So it was a little bit more of a difficult situation, you know? So my whole team quit again. I had three of my four frontline quit. And I was like, back down to gold. And I was like, okie dokie. Like, here we go again. Like it's diamond happening all over again. So I went into another depression and I was like, I'm not going to hit founders. There's no way. Like, there's no way I've maxed out my diamond points. I either have to hit blue diamond or I, I have to have a miracle app and I have to have new leaders come in and bring them to gold or something. Like I just, I didn't know where I was going to get those. I think I was at like 800 ish points. And I like those last 200 points seemed so unachievable. I had no clue what my plan was going to be, but I just did what I do. And I just keep surging forward, constantly looking for new leaders. And my three leaders who quit still are no longer building doTERRA. They never have come back. But the positive thing is that when they did change the founders, you know, the points, because I had dropped back down to gold, I realized in the month of December, we were halfway through the month when they made that change and they, they, what, you know, all the changes, I looked at my organization. I was like, holy moly, if I hit diamond this month, which I hadn't done in like a year at that point, because of my team quitting, I realized if I could hit diamond in two weeks, I would be a founder. I would get the last of the points that I needed. And I did have a new leader that was giving me some points as well. And so I, there was no Christmas or New Year's at my house. Like it was two weeks of craziness. I hadn't hit diamond in so long. I had no clue what I was going to do, but basically I called all of every person who had ever shared, told me they were going to build, hosted a class for me, my leaders who have quit. I literally called everyone and I was very transparent. And I said, I know you're not doing doTERRA or I know that you quit or I know you've stepped back but I have two weeks of madness and I'm asking for your help. Like, and this is something that was very eye-opening to me because I'm not, besides my brother, that was different because it's family, but I'm not selfish in my doTERRA journey normally. I'm so focused on my leaders and what are their goals? Like, and it's okay if their goals don't match my goals. Like I'm always, what can I do for my leaders? And I'm never like, I need you to hit my goal. Like I've never been that way. So when it came time, for me to truly ask my team for help and see if they would rally for me, they all did because I've always been so focused on their goals and it's never been about me. So when the time came and I was like, listen, I'm being honest, I'm making it about me right now. I want to hit this goal. You guys have been with me for however long. Like I'm asking, would you host one class? Would you sample some people? Would you ask for referrals? Like whatever you're willing to do, I will take it. And my team, truly people who have not built in so long, everybody stepped up and brought in volume. And, and that again, reignited my team again. Like, it's so funny, isn't it? Like your team will drop off or you'll have leaders quit. And sometimes all it takes is them seeing you continue to succeed and people do come back. And again, same situation. Not everyone has come back, especially my main leaders. Like I'm still literally 
restructurings, but I pulled it out, hit founders in December, December 31st, like literally New Year's Eve at midnight, barely scratching through hit diamond. And I haven't hit diamond since I literally am still rebuilding. I'm still like a gold platinum, you know, in between and I'm rebuilding my whole, my whole business. So that was literally my founders, my founders journey. Do you have any questions on that? <laughs> that was a lot. Sorry. <laughs> Well, I love hearing, and I think it's so important for everyone else to hear too, um, how people do come and go in our business. And I really think we need to normalize that, <laughs> you know, like yeah. um, it's easy to think, especially in those first year or two of our business, we have this, you know, we often, if we grow and succeed, we're going to have a team and we're going to have builders and we're going to have community. And, um, you know, I, I know for myself, I've had uh, my team step kind of dissolve twice myself. Um, and I'm in that phase right now where all of my builders from during COVID, when everything was so crazy, we had so much fun and we actually grew during the early part yeah. of COVID and all these wonderful things happened, but then, you know, life shifted, the pandemic changed a lot of things for a lot of people. And, you know, those people, and I love those women, you know, they're like, I miss them and I, I hang out with them outside of doTERRA. But I'm careful not to, you know, not to bring doTERRA into conversations if they don't, because I don't want them thinking that I'm always trying to, yeah, it's not all about doTERRA. And and I love them as women, you know, as friends, because that's what we became. Um, So I think that's important to hear is that uh, I I have Natalie Rigby is one of my upline. And she talked about that early on in my, uh, my uh, business, talking about how her business fell apart a couple of times and she's an original founder. Right. And, um, you know, that, so I had heard it. Of course, that doesn't make it any easier when it actually when happens. When it happens, right. Yeah. But I agree with you. Like it needs to be normalized. And you, and if you listen, you know, if you guys do any personal development, any business, any network marketing, any high le- level leader in a company, it happens to everyone. It truly is part of the business. And just like you said, it doesn't make it easy when it happens to you. It sucks and it's sad. And like, I do appreciate that. I, I, same thing. Like I'm, I love my team and I love everyone who has been a part of my journey. And I just had to have that realization of like, they, I love them all. And it's okay that they quit. Cause they were part of my journey to get me to where I am now. It's okay. If they're not that team, that's going to get me to that next level. So I'm on my next phase of finding the leaders who are going to take me to that next level. And th- who knows if they'll stick around. And my, you know, Molly, my upline, she said the same thing to me too. And I remember when I was new, I was like, you know, it doesn't set in until it happens to you, but she's like, none of my main leaders that I found at the beginning are still building with me. And I'm like, what, what's the way mine are going to be with me forever. And it's so not like that. And so it, you know, it is very interesting that when it happens to you, it seems like the world's going to end, but like there's, and I don't know what everyone on here, what your aspirations in, or goals in doTERRA are, and they could be, you know, hitting elite or being, going all the way and going presidential diamond, but no matter what, you're going to go through it. Like you can't get to those levels of those goals without going through those times. Like people's lives change and things change. And every time I have come out of the darkness part of it, like I obviously am so much stronger and have so much just more clarity. Like, you know, you grow, that's where the growth comes from too. So I always appreciate now on the other side, those, all those moments that have led up to everything. But, and you got to look at it like this. If my team hadn't quit, and I wouldn't have dropped back, I wouldn't have gotten those extra points to hit founders. So if you look at it like that, like it was, it was a blessing because I had founders, you know? So I didn't see that at the time, but now looking back, I'm like, oh my gosh, I would not have been a found. Like I, I still am going to say I would have hit founders because I would have found a way, but I wouldn't have hit it in December, you know, at that moment. So there's always positives that come from it, you know? Yeah, absolutely. And I think, um, you know, again, one of my big realizations is thinking about not even just rank and founders and all that stuff, but just realizing in the pandemic, you know, my business, I did drop back from uh, diamond to gold Mm -hmm. and I've been gold for the last, I don't know, year and a half, two, um, since like the fall of 2020, when things started to slow down on the online side of things for us. But, um, and that, so my income definitely adjusted from a diamond income to a gold income. And it's, it's a, it was a big change for our family. And so, um, but I looked back and I've been, it'll be 10 years that I'm with doTERRA this year. 
And, um, you know, it was, it's just been in the last year or two that my income has gone down and for a business to be rock solid income for so long, um, and then to experience, and, and I was talking to, I have a brother who owns a motorcycle, uh, shop and he started his business the same year I started mine, the same, same time. Right. And so he, um, he shares some of his stories as a brick and mortar business. And he didn't take a paycheck at all from his business for the first few years. Right. And he, and he, he talked about the ups and downs and, uh, you know, I have a few other women people that I network that have businesses and, you know, so we're, we're a little bit spoiled in doTERRA because you hit that, you know, you just expect your business that when you hit a certain point, right. it's a happily, we're in happily ever after at this point, right? Like it's going to stay this way and it's going to be amazing. And, um, you know, but it's worth fighting for. I think that was my big realization when I realized that things were shifting again. And last year, especially, um, you know, I had that, that realization of like, my leaders are stepping away and you, every time I feel like it happens, you kind of have to find that place in yourself of like, are you going to stick with this? You know, are you going to move forward? Is this, and it's, and for me, it's not just me. It's like asking God, right? Like, it's like, okay, God, am I in the right place? Am I still supposed to be doing this? Because it it feels like your business slips through your fingers when this happens and people step away. You there's, you only have so much control over your business. And so um, asking yourself, you know, am I in the right place? Am I supposed to be doing this? Like, do I have what it takes to keep going after a setback like this, but, you know, I, I love to bring the traditional business models into this conversation because another friend of ours, they, they took out a loan for $180,000 to start up their company. And they started their company about a year before we did. And he worked at it for five years. He was working 80 hour weeks or more traveling, just put everything they had. They had kids, their whole family, $180,000 in debt on top of it. And that business failed after about five years. So we are blessed <laughs> like in so many right. ways. And last year um, I opened a, I've been teaching and exploring other areas of wellness during the pandemic. And we opened a little studio and all that stuff. And in doing that, I love doing it, but it's also, again, it's that reinforcement of this is worth fighting for, you know, and, and we just, we have to shift our expectations and get ourselves in a place where we're okay no matter what happens with the people that come into our business, they're all business partners. They're, I've heard it said in Indoterra, they're volunteer army and mm-hmm. we don't have, we can't tell people what to do. So we just get to be in that relationship partner with who, who shows up and, and let it go. So, so um, what do you feel like were some of your greatest challenges other than like people stepping aside or people dropping out of their business? What other challenges did you face in, in, in the last year or two? <clears throat> Um, honestly, things have pivoted, Uh, you know, things keep changing. I still think we're in a really weird time. Like things are still very different ever since COVID. And I think that a lot of people in doTERRA are still trying to figure out a a new groove. Like literally that's, I guess the best way I could put it. And so other leaders I talked to, well, I love the first thing that you said of like normalizing the challenges of this business. Cause I think that sometimes you look at, Oh, a founder or a diamond or a presidential, and you have no clue the the struggles or the challenges or what they're going through, or maybe that they are dropped. There's so many leaders that I thought were presidentials that have dropped down to whatever. So like dropping rank and having that normal ebb and flow is normal. And I wish that was normalized for me because when you drop rank, I thought everything was over. And I didn't even realize like, it's such a part of any business, especially doTERRA, like it's normal to do that. I mean, yes, you'll have those anomalies, those unicorns that will, you know, build fast or hit a rank and never drop down, but it, that's more of the exception and not the the norm. And so um, I still think that we're in this groove. I have heard, so we had a founder's call. So I'll give you guys a little snippet. So we had, it was my first founder's call and I don't, it was at the beginning of the year and it was all of the founders at that point. And it was one of the most eye-opening calls because everyone was able to come on and they were being, I don't remember what led to it or how this even came up, but everyone was being so transparent. Most of the founders on that call had dropped rank, like had dropped down. And that was the whole, ended up being the whole topic of the call was normalizing and being more vocal to, you know, maybe newer doTERRA builders that this it's okay. And it is a part of it still sucks, but it is a part of the journey. And so, um, 
that being said, everyone is literally trying to find a groove. Things that were working before maybe are not working right now. So I feel like I've been in a constant form of pivoting, like all the way up to diamond. I've built in person. I have no online presence at all whatsoever. It's always been belly to belly. It's, I mean, I'm on Molly and Alicia. I'm on Alicia to be second generation. Like I'm a back to basics person. So that's how I've always built. But guess what? It's not working for me anymore right now. It, it, it was working before. And for me personally, it's not anymore. So we are trying different things with our team. I feel like we're in a state of trial and error to see <laughs> what works, but it's also been really fun for me because I've always kind of been, I, this was one of the conversations I had with Joyce on the bus. I've kind of always been a stickler of like simplicity, duplication, doing the same things, doing what's proven to be effective. So I was never a leader that was like always bringing in new stuff. And now I'm, I'm, I kind of like release the reins on my team and they're going to pharmacies, like they're doing spa classes, like all the, it, it's not just do the oil class, do back to basics. So this has been very new territory for me. So this is new. So one of the things that's like been fun and that we're doing that's killing it right now are these spa classes. I don't know if you guys have seen any of these leaders doing spa classes, but I have a Zoom tonight with, to finally like present it with my whole team. But some of the leaders on my team right now are packed with spa classes because they're just booking three to four classes off of every class. The average sales are 500 to a thousand with every class. And we've just kind of developed our own little spa class system and it's working so great. So that was like the little short version of just, we're just trying to see what's fun, what's keeping everyone engaged, what's working. And so right now I'm kind of like in this gray zone of I, I am doing the same things, but we're also expanding and seeing what else is out there, if that makes sense. Yeah, if there if that doesn't caps or capture exactly what I feel like a lot of us are doing, it's like it's almost like juggling. You know, you're doing a little bit of this and you're doing a little bit of that. And, you know, I have my my little studio opened up this year. So I'm doing a, you know, some oil nights during the month and I'm having people in and getting some enrollments there. I put uh essential oils on my sign. And so I've had people that already use oils, but they're using different brands or whatever. I've had people actually stopping in and being like, Hey, I saw you had essential oils on your sign. And I had someone enroll right there on the spot. Didn't hadn't used doTERRA was had we used a different company in the past and didn't know anybody around here had oils. And I told her about little starter packages. She's like, great, I'll take a starter package. And she, she enrolled, you know, so just little things like that. But then I'm also working on building some automation and some online stuff and practicing some of those skills and still working with my retention and my old customers and kind of checking in and seeing what's going on there. I'm, th I'm thinking about over the summer here, how could I re-engage with them and maybe offer, go back to some of our Facebook parties and see if I could get a little interest in that, or I would love to do some in-person stuff. So I think everyone would love to hear a little bit more about your spa events because that perked my ears up. I've read a little bit about what pe some people are doing with these events, but if you don't mind sharing a little more details, that would be lovely. I totally will. It's been really fun. Um, and so the, so I was watching, yeah, I think it was Audra's like, I've been watching leaders kind of do this. And then like, I don't know if you guys know, like Melody Brandon on Instagram, she has these like, amazing, they're like fancy, beautiful spa parties. I'm like that. I'm never going to make it look like that. <laughs> like they're just immaculate. So I've just been kind of in the behind the scenes and, and watching. And so I had one leader I'm, I'm a type of person. I like to test things to make sure they're effective before I like bring it to my team. So I don't, I don't like giving people whiplash. Like let's do this and let's do this without knowing what really will work. So I had one leader, she's pushing for founders right now. And she's like, I want to do these spa classes. So I was like, okay, you and I will work together. We'll develop these. And then if it's working, we'll bring it to the team and we'll have all of it, all the kinks worked out and it'll be great. So it's been great. And so we've been kind of trial and airing it. And now I think we have a pretty good system so far. So basically, actually, do you mind if I share my screen? Am I able to share my no, screen? No, I'd love for you to. I might think I have to make you a co-host. Oh, yeah, it says disabled. So I'll, um, I should have had this pulled up, but I didn't I didn't actually know I was going to talk about this. So we'll pull it up and I'll show you and I'll send everyone the Google Drive. I have Beautiful. everything in there and share it with you guys. Okay. Here. Yeah, I'll share it with the recording. That'd be great. Okay, perfect. My face. Okay. Hopefully it's pulled up here. Okay. Okay, awesome. Um, templates. I'm trying to figure out the chat. 
this is good. Okay. Scissor. The crossfire. Illustration. Hold on, hold on. I'm trying to find first the graphic. Maybe it's the checklist. Mm, okay, I'll find it in a minute and I'll just keep talking. Okay, so basically what we do is we have these little stations set up just like how everyone's doing. So I don't think it's necessarily the stations that matter. Like I, we are playing, we've been doing different ones. And it also depends on if you have any like team members helping you because it could be a lot of work for just one person. So my one leader, she's very like, she's very frugal. So she's like, I'm doing this as cheap as possible. So she has um, one station that you have your feet, you know, soaking in Epsom salt. They get to choose whatever oil they want in there. While they're sitting in there with their feet, they have an upper body relaxation where she does, she bought large, extra large men's socks from Costco, filled them with rice, warms them in a microwave at her house before she leaves, throws them in an insulated cooler or whatever. So when they, she gets to the party, they're still warm. And then she lets them drip oil, whatever oil. And so they're sitting there, they have the heating pad on, their feet are soaking. And while everyone's doing that, she then does a like speed oil class. So it's not a normal class. She just talks about basics of the oils, maybe some highlights of whatever product she's using. And she has like a 15, 10, 15 minute class. The other stations that she has done is we have like a hand station. So they do wash their hands with like the sugar scrub. Um, and then they can choose like a lotion to put on after the body butter or something. They have, um, some of them have done an aroma touch hand massage station. That's if you have people helping you. Um, we have a beverage station, which is as simple as water and citrus oils and collagen samples. That's, we've been doing that at every single one. Um, little collagen samples. And then um, I think, I'm, I feel like I miss, oh, a facial station. That's the last one. So you can pick whatever facial line you like. She's rocking it with the reveal, you know, two-step system. And that's the only one that she has right now because that's what she loves. And so she has that and then they, you know, can, can do that. So that. Now, this is what's been working for like enrollments and volume and then booking classes. So I want to show you um, classes and class templates. Let me open this one. Oh, here it is. Okay. We have a couple different versions that we made of this and I'll share all this with you guys. So when they come in, they get this little flyer and it's like a wish list, like a shopping list. So as they're going from station to station, whatever that they like, they're, you know, just checking off. So they're making their wish list. So then at the bottom, so you can see, and I'll send you the actual template so you guys can edit it to whatever products that you are going to be using. Mm -hmm. And then at the bottom, you know, she has, here's what the specials are. So we've been doing 50 PV. We give them a guidebook. And then the other two are from doTERRA. So it's not like it's really, you know, coming out of our, our pocket. So we just have a couple different versions of this. And then we have, what is this one? The beverage. Oh, it, this one's, I'll show you it. This one's just the beverage station, which you can make whatever. It's just, what, remember this old graphic of like, what oils are in your water? So I just remade it. And then we have the little collagen, you know, at the bottom. So we just have this like either laminated or throw it in a picture frame and set it by your oils and water. And then I'm going to show you how we've been getting all these people to book classes. Where's my Google? Postus guidelines, no postus. Oh, is this the stations? Sorry, I just made this, so I'm not like, I don't remember what's in what. Okay, so here's here's a basic outline so you guys will get this. It's examples of different stations, how uh, we've been working the different stations, um, recipes. If you want to make fun little essential oil mocktail drinks, I put recipes in there. Um, healthy food recipes. Some people have done a sun care station just so people could try, you know, it's summer. So you could add a sun care station in. And then here's the host of class station. This is how we're booking classes. Find some area of whoever's hosting, find an area on the table or wherever that you're going to have this host of class station. And what we do is we have a flyer that I'll show you. And it kind of shows them all the things that they're going to get for host a class for if they want to host a class. Now I will say my leader is going for founders. We're throwing some crazy incentives out there because it's an appropriate time that she's pushing for founders. So normally I probably wouldn't offer this much stuff, but it's working like crazy. So, you know, you can edit it to whatever, whatever that you want. So kind of what they're getting is 
if they book a class, I just want to find the stinking graphic. That's the one I want to find so I can show it to you. And I Post don't know where. Gift text graphic right there. No, that was, that was the one, an older one, but I made like, um, that's the class outline. I'm so sorry. I really wanted to show it to you. And I don't know where it is. No. Well, okay. Well, but you'll at least get the, get the gist of it. So can I have it in your Canva. Yeah, I just didn't want to waste time with you guys, but I'll totally open it to show you. Mm -mm. So basically, for the host of class, we kind of have four different little categories of this, of like what they're able to get. And one of them is What they get that night, if they actually are booking a class, here it is, there we go. I gotta add that to the Google Drive if that's not there. Okay, so we have this in like a picture frame, host your own spa party. And my team's calling them all different stuff, pampered parties, spa class, spa party. So like call it whatever you want. And there's two different categories, what they get tonight if they book a date and then what they get the night of their party. So for the night, if they get a class date on the books that night, they get a keychain, and we've been letting them fill up half of the oil. So they get, they, we actually bring some oils, they get to fill up five of the vials in the keychain. And I'm gonna explain why we changed this. And then whoever books a date to host a class, they get entered to win some sort of prize. You don't have to do a Yarrow Pump Serum. We're just trying to get crazy right now, but you can do whatever. They, people don't even care. They just want to win something. So it doesn't have to be anything crazy. So that's what they get that night. The night of their party, we've been using our points, using our LRPs and ordering like four things. And I found these, they cost a dollar 30, I think off Amazon or go to the dollar store, get a little gift baggie and just make a cute little spa like gift basket. So we've been doing like a lotion, the sugar scrub, a soap, like a body wash, whatever you want. And it's not even really coming out of our pockets because we're using like our, you know, our orders or our points for that. And then they get the 20% doTERRA dollars. Like who would look at this and not say, I want to host a class. Now I will be transparent. This is um, a challenge that we had and now we're remedying it. And I'll show you how we're remedying it. My, my the average was we were getting three to four classes booked for, from each class, which is way higher than any other oil class I've ever done. I've never been able to book this many classes, you know, off of a class. So that part's working. Now my leader, Jen, who's, who I've been testing this with, she calls me, we're on our last mentor call and she's like, okay, we have a problem. I overheard these ladies at my last spa party and four of them booked a class. And then I heard them talking and they were like, we'll just all invite the same people and we get all this free stuff. And I'm like, okay, we're going to put a stop to that right now because we're giving a lot of stuff. So that's when we came up with, um, where was the other picture that I was going to show you? I came up with the spa stipulations. So this is kind of how I would prep my hostesses, like when I was like really doing tons of oil classes. So we kind of like, or like, okay, if you want to host a class, great. But you only get to fill up half your keychain. The other half, if you get at least five people there, you can fill up, you know, one oil for every person that you get. It's kind of the Elise Shedevy style. So they can have a full keychain if they get five, you know, five people there. Raffles the same. They have to become a customer if they want the 20%. If they don't want to enroll, like that's up to them. I'll keep the fast start sun. Like that doesn't matter. Um, and then at their class is when they'll receive their host basket and then fill up the rest of their keychain. But we put this little stipulation at the bottom. Oh, sorry. Why won't it let me move it here? Okay, I'm just going to read it to you. In order to receive your spa gift basket and five more keychain oils, you must have five new people attend your party. A new person is someone over the age of 18, has never attended a spa party before, and does not have a doTERRA wholesale membership. So we're just giving them those stipulations. And what we've been telling them is, hey, if you have repeat people that want to come again, great. This is just the stipulations if you want all these gifts. You know what I mean? So then it's at least taking that barrier. And they're not just inviting the same people over and over again to get all the free, the free stuff. Um, so that is how we remedied that. So we basically, if they want to host a class, we give them this to, to like take home. You know, we kind of make it as like a little flyer, just print it. 
and they can take it with them once they get a class, um, you know, a class booked or whatever. But that's really it. They're so simple. They're so fun. I think we're, you know, back into the phase of people are still really looking for connection and fun. And it's like, you can phrase it however you want. I think that's what I really like about it. Like, it can be like, hey, do you want to do a mom get together, like a mom's night out? Do you want to get pampered? I'm doing it for businesses. Like, do you want to do a customer appreciation? I'll do this for free for you. Like, what business is going to be like, no, thank you. Um, so that's one way we're doing it. Where I live right now, I have like a homeschool co-op and it's very crunchy mom. So for them, I'm like, hey, want to do a non-toxic crunchy spa party? So I'm kind of like changing it up depending on who we're attracting and what the demographic is. And then there was one thing I was going to just tell you that was super important about it. Oh my gosh, what was it? Slip my mind. I don't, it'll come back to me. So what question, I know you guys probably have questions on, on that. Oh, I remember, yeah. sorry, real quick before I forget it. When you buy the supplies, like the little foot baths and stuff, this is kind of how I'm showing it to my team tonight. There's going to be, there's different levels. I found USB rechargeable heated, you know, neck pillows that you could buy. They're like 15 bucks a piece, or you could literally buy the socks. Like, so there's, there's the expensive way, a medium way and a cheap way. So you're going to be able to do it for the foot soak baths. We found these amazing reuse. They're like five bucks a piece. They're reusable and collapsible little foot bath um, buckets. And so we've been using those. You could also go to Walmart and get an aluminum tin baking pan and fill that with water. Like, so there's all different levels depending on your budget. It doesn't have to be this extravagant spa class. The other thing, last thing, and then I'll open it up to questions. I just don't want to forget. Um, you can charge for this. Meaning if you want to charge five or 10 bucks for your first couple classes, like each person pays five or 10 bucks. A, we all know that when it's free, you know, a lot of times people aren't invested and they cannot show up. But when they pay for something, they're way more likely to actually show up because they don't want to miss out on that. But if you feel awkward about charging for it, what we've been playing around with is, hey, if you end up spending 50 PV or more, you don't have to, you can buy whatever. But if you spend 50 PV or more, we'll actually reimburse your five or 10 bucks for the class fee because then you're just getting it back. But I'm having my leaders charge the ones who are just... um on a budget right now because they want help being able to actually buy the products and the equipment that they need to do these spot classes. So I just wanted to make sure I told you guys that part too. I love it. Um, someone asked, are you doing this at home or in a secured venue? It's any at anyone's house or place of business that wants to host. I haven't done any at my house. I would, I just, we're getting tons of hostesses that want to host it in their house or their business. And then someone says, uh, so they're not doing a DIY at all, right? Some are. We haven't incorporated that yet. I do have one leader in Massachusetts that she wants to have like a perfume or a rollerball station. But so that, again, will just be optional. I feel like you can have whatever stations that you want. That part doesn't matter. Okay. And then if someone hosts, you're asking that their guests pay the 5 or $10. Yes. If you want to charge. So my leader and the same one who's in Massachusetts, she's charged. She's in this phase right now where and it, it is working for her with her demographic and the people that are out there. She's charging for samples because people are actually using them, showing up to classes. I've never personally done this, so I just can't speak to it personally, but it's working for her. So when I presented the spa thing to her, she's like, great. So her first one, she actually had kind of like a registration, like you got to pay your five or $10 or however much you want to charge by this day, because we do have limited seating. Cause you know, we're maxing it at like 10 people that we've found that one person can like, and it's a, still a lot by yourself. Like it is more set up. It's more, you know, a little more work than a normal oil class, but it's way worth it because the volume's high. You're booking all these classes. But anyway, so she kind of did like a registration form and was like, you have to register and pay by this date. Or you don't get a spot, you know, because we're going to open it up. We want to fill the 10 spots and we're limited on seating. I love that. That's awesome. So that's working for her. Love it. Does anyone else have any other questions about the spa night? Awesome. Um, so we also talked and we've got about maybe 10, 15 minutes left. 
Mm-hmm. Um, you and I talked about, you had had a lot of success with duplication around builders and teaching p- builders how to share. And so I wondered if you had any thoughts on that, what would you say to the person who feels like I can go do these things? I feel fairly confident I can enroll people or I could do those things, but I've struggled with talking about the business right now. I struggle with finding builders. I, 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 I'm losing my confidence around the business side and that makes it harder to get excited about doing the sharing part of it and the actual enrolling part of it. What would you say to that? How do you guys identify builders? I know, I know what you're going to say, some of it anyway, but uh, will you share with the group? <laughs> she knows I'm very passionate about this, this subject. So if you guys know the um, Seth Risen May, right? He's like one of the OG, you know, in doTERRA. I kind of, I used to listen to him when I was brand new in doTERRA, like, you know, years ago. And then he kind of disappeared for a while. And then he came back and he's been speaking and he's incredible. And I've been following his kind of method of how he leads his team and how he's launching new builders and basically his duplication model. And I fell in love with it. And what's interesting is it's not that different than like what I was doing before. There was just some little tweaks that just made a lot of difference for my team. So we are still doing this duplication model because it really, I think, resonated with me because it was very simple and duplicatable. And that's really how I've always tried to be with my team. Like they always will know what's the next step. What do I do next? How do I, what, where do I, what's the workflow of how I'm taking, you know, this, this person through the pipeline here. So his duplication model is very simple. And again, not much different than what you've heard or learned before, but basically he what, and he doesn't care about sampling. He's like, sample or not. That's a person. It's like a personal choice. A lot of leaders are divided on if they sample or not. So that I won't even get into that part, but sample or not. But basically, you're going to be walking people through three doorways. And the way he trains his new leaders is he has basically like something called a, um, a quick start guide. And it's basically like doTERRA's launch guide. And he kind of just shows them our pipeline and some very simple things to focus on at the beginning. For example, if you have a brand new person, in my opinion, they don't need to know about placements. They don't really need to know about the back office. They don't need to know about how to do a membership overview yet. Like sometimes I was like kind of jumping the gun and just trying to train these new people on stuff that they weren't even at that step yet. So when someone's not like physically doing the things, It's not really, you can watch all the trainings you want. It's not going to set in until you're actually there doing it. So I kind of shifted to when I have a new person, what is a new person focusing on? They're focusing on, well, of course, what their goals are. This is all dependent on what their personal goals are, but they're they're focused on their names list, you know, contacting, how are they going to be networking and sharing the oils? Like they're just like oil fairies at the beginning. You're, you're, you're planting seeds. You're just sharing. And then we're teaching them the class. And so they're still doing the same stuff, but I'm like segmenting it, you know, a little bit better, I guess you could say. Um, And so what his philosophy is, us as the leader, whoever, whatever you can, you know, your mentor, whoever, or you yourself, we know how to talk about the business. Like the, you know, um, most of the seasoned leaders, they're comfortable now. When I was brand new, I would look at Molly, do a business overview. And I was like, I'm never going to be able to do that. I'm never going to be able to talk about the business like her. And now it's my favorite thing to talk about, right? But when you're new, you're nervous. You don't know how to present the business. You're not fluid yet. Like you're like, what if someone asked me these questions? I don't know the answers. So I had this aha moment as the leader of like, I need to do more for my team at the beginning because I'm the one who understands the business. They don't. So it is harder for new people sometimes to find builders because it's just a new thing for them. So I've been kind of doing more of the process and me myself, I'm helping identify during a new person's launch. Like, so say they have some classes booked and I'm teaching the classes because they're new. I'm doing all of those membership overviews for them of their launch week. So I am the one doing every membership overview. And the reason is, is because at every overview, we're asking this magical Seth resume question, which is, are you open to the idea of building an income with doTERRA? Word for word, that sentence. 
And that was one of the minuscule changes that I made, which was interesting because I talk about the business all the time, but was I consistent at doing it at every overview? I was not like there would be, you know, I would maybe do it later or whatever. I never was doing it every time. So now with myself and my leaders, every overview, I'm asking that question. And you will be amazed at the psychology of that worded question, but also you'll be amazed of how many people will say yes. Now, when they say yes, it doesn't mean like, oh, I'm going to build and be a leader. They're like, yeah, I'm open to learning about it. So it's like a little seed is planted. So you're doing your same class, sample or not, oil class, whatever. You are doing your membership overview, same as normal, except you're asking, you're fighting all your instincts because we like to judge, right? And we're like, oh, they won't. They're not going to be interested. I'm not going to ask them. I know they're struggling financially or they don't need it. You have to force yourself to ask that question. Um, and so then um, if they're interested, we do a business overview, same as normal. So whatever that step is for you, going over doTERRA's build guide, doing, sending a video, a business opportunity, there's tons on YouTube, like whatever that step is to you so they can learn a little bit more about the business. Um, after that, if they're ready to go and they're like, this sounds great, I'd love to, to do this in some capacity. We find out what their goals are and, you know, come up with a little kind of business plan based on their preferences and their goals and their schedule. And then we just get going and show them the duplication model. So literally we're ju we've just been doing that over and over and over. So I would narrow it down to the three biggest differences is I'm doing more at the beginning for my new leaders because they're kind of shadowing me, right? They're listening, they're soaking it up. And as I'm launching and helping their new leaders launch, they're learning from me. So like I'm having them just like shadow me and then they're replicating it with other areas, you know, in their business. Um, oh, am I a host? Should, sorry, should I admit this person? There we go. Okay, sorry. <laughs> um, yeah, so it's just been little tweaks like that. Like, so I'm still doing the same stuff, but just kind of doing those little tweaks. But the biggest change, 100%, has been asking at every overview that question. Like, so we've found so many new builders and planting so many more seeds because of that little question. I love it. I think it's just a nice, you know, I've, I've looked at Seth's stuff in the past and like you said, he kind of dropped off and I've, I had all the edge success stuff back in the day, <laughs> you know, all that kind of thing. But then, like you said, there's, there's just so many different things over the years that we shared Oterra, um, that it was really nice to reconnect with that material and to hear how it's working really well for you and your team. So that's really mm -hmm. awesome. Yeah, very simple. And and I know, you know, you have the info, so I know you can, you know, share that with anyone who's interested of his duplication stuff. Um, but I, I always am a firm believer of just keeping things simple. I always want my team to feel like they know what the next step is. And like, so when they get someone that says yes to building, they're like, okay, now I do this. Now I do this. Like, I don't ever want them to be like, I, because then you don't have a system. Like if your team doesn't know what's next or what to do, then there's not a good system in place. So I'm very like hardcore believer in having that, that done. I love it. That's amazing. All right. Well, we are approaching the end of our time together. Elise, is there anything else you want to share? Anything else you feel called to mention? Um, I mean, I will just speak on founders. Like, I don't know if anyone in here is like going for founders or if it seems so unachievable at this point, I know we're in like the last few months of, of doing this, but like, I, I, if you guys have ever experienced the miracle of like the things that can happen during those last couple of days of the month or the last, you know, like things just happen and will fall into place. So I truly, truly believe that if you have the mindset of like, I'm going to do this no matter what, and you're doing everything in your power to do it, it may not happen the way you thought the path that leads you there, but you have to just still believe in the end result and let go of the how and just focus on that end result. Because I truly had like when I was going for founders and diamond and all these goals, I've had to just know that I'm going to get there. And even though I'm like so strategic in my mind and I'm like, I have it all mapped out and this is everything that's going to happen. It never happens in the way that I thought it would. So if it's so hard, but if you can let go of what you think that path looks like and just know you're going to get to that end result. It's very freeing in a way because it will happen. And then you look back and you're like, that's not at all what my plan a was, but I got there anyway. So just know to not give up and like just push till the very last second. You just never know what miracles are going to happen, you know, to get you there. I love it. That's amazing. Okay. This is our last chance 
um, for the uh, questions for uh, Elise. Any last minute questions for Elise? All right. Well, Lise, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. All that wonderful sharing and that spa stuff. I'll get those links from you and share it with the recording. And uh, okay. we will we will see you at convention and be celebrating awesome. you. Yes. Yeah. Thank you so much, you guys. It's awesome to meet all of you and see you and good luck to you all. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Have a good day. Bye.